not because of you. It's because of Jesus. It's not because of your goodness. It's because of His. The Bible says that a tree of life is a dream fulfilled. If you believe Jesus is God and you believe He rose from the dead, you're going to heaven. There's nothing you can do to make God love you any less. He loves you. Hey there, how you doing? I'm really glad you've tuned in today. My name's Ben Conway and I'm the, the pastor of Tree of Life Church in Dagnum, Essex. I also run a network of churches. Uh, across the, the south of England and we just want you to know how much God loves you. We want you to know that God cares about you, we want you to know that God is on your side and what we really want is to help you walk in your dreams and to see your dreams come true. One of the most powerful things when it comes to dreaming and, and walking in your dreams and walking in your destiny, that's a question I get asked a lot, how can I know what God has called me to do? And one of the most powerful things is the use of your imagination. A number of Christians are scared of using their imagination, scared of talking about their imagination, but all through the Bible, it puts an importance on using your imagination. I'm just going to open my Bible here to Hebrews chapter 11 and have a little read here. And um, some of you will know these verses, some of you will know Hebrews chapter 11. It says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. Now, the word hope there in the Greek is elpsis. And it means what you imagine, the images that you have in your head. You, you see, your, your mind is full of images all the time. You know, if you're in bed at night and your child hasn't come home, and they said they'd be home at 10 and they haven't come home, your mind will have an image of where they might be. You know, and often it's a negative image. Oh, they're going to have this, and they could be lying in the gutter somewhere, this could be this. Oh, the bills come in, and we have a negative image. And that's bad. Those kind of imaginations, the Bible tells us what to do with those in 2 Corinthians 10. It says, cast them down. When you have negative thoughts, you cast them down. But you know, it's not enough just to get rid of the negative stuff. That leaves a vacuum. And you don't want a vacuum. You want to fill your mind with good things and good thoughts. And faith gives substance to what you hope for or what you imagine. Ephesians 3.20 says that God is able God is able, that word there is dynamis, it means he's got the power, the ability. God is able to do what? To do exceedingly abundantly above. Not just above, not just abundantly above, but exceedingly abundantly above all you ask and imagine. So you can ask God for stuff and you can pray and say, God, I need this and God, I want this and God, I'll, I'll, please, can I have this? And you can pray and you can ask God and that's good. You know, Jesus taught us to ask. Anything you ask in my name, I'll do it for you. John 14, 14. Jesus wants us to ask and ask big. But it's, we don't just have to ask, we have to imagine. And faith gives substance to what we imagine, to what we see. If you can see it on the inside and you can believe it, and it can manifest, you can have it in your life. You know, when, when God started talking to me about planting a church, you know, the first service we had, one person turned up. We had one person at our first service. And it was like, okay, that's great. You know, we'd advertised in the newspapers, advertised on the internet. And, you know, I, I just preached as if there was 100 people there. I, what, where were the 100 people? In my imagination. And now we've got a lot more than 100 people every single week in Dagenham. And so now I'm imagining 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, because it's your imagination that gives power to your faith and to what you believe. There was a lady came to me once, and her auntie had died in her early 40s, and her mother had died in her early 40s, and her grandmother had died in her early 40s, and she couldn't imagine anything other than dying in her early 40s and she was heading to that age and she was scared she was worried you see the imagination can make you scared it can make you worried it can make you excited it can make you happy it's amazing the power of imagination the power of dreaming and yet we insult people who use their imagination like kids have a great imagination and then we send them to school and school knocks it out of them we need to be dreamers you know joseph i said behold the dreamer. They were insulting him, his brothers. They thought they were being rude. Eh, you're just a dreamer. But you know what? You need to be a dreamer. Joseph had a big dream. And you know what? It was Joseph that became the prime minister. You know, at the age of six, 
Neil Armstrong dreamed of walking on the moon. I mean, you could dream of walking on the moon today, and people have done it. You know, that's a, still a big dream, but he dreamed of walking on the moon when nobody had ever walked on the moon. That's just amazing. You've got to have a dream. You've got to use your imagination. And so this lady came to me and said, I'm scared I'm going to die. She was imagining her funeral, planning her funeral, choosing the songs for her funeral. I said, that's not what we're going to do. We're going to, see, we're going to cast down that imagination, but we're going to put a positive imagination in there. So we held a 50th birthday for this lady. We got a cake, happy 50th birthday. And we invited people and we celebrated and we sang. Why? Because I wanted her to imagine, not her funeral, but her 50th birthday. You see, faith takes you in the direction of your imagination. And that's the missing key for a lot of you listening to this right now. You know, you want to believe God's word. You want to believe God's on your side. You want to believe God's good. But your imagination's always going back to negative things. So how do we change your imagination? How do we change the way we think? Well, Paul says in Romans 12, he says, be transformed. You'll be transformed. You'll never be the same again. That Greek word there is metamorphic. It's a word for caterpillar becoming a butterfly. If you're tired of living the caterpillar life, and God doesn't want you to live the caterpillar life. He wants you to live the abundant life. Jesus Christ came to give you you life and life in abundance right now if you're sitting here watching this and you're sick god wants you well if you're sitting here watching this and you've got debts coming at you and you don't know how to handle it god wants you out of debt if you've got relationships that are causing you stress and strife god wants you to live in peace god wants you to live the abundant life some of you watching this there's sinful selfish habits that you have struggled and struggled to break and haven't been able to break I'm telling you today, I'm here to tell you today, you're not watching this by accident. You're not watching this by mistake. God, Jesus Christ himself, wants you free and wants you living the abundant life. But you have to see it in the inside, in your head, before you can see it on the outside. You have to be like Joseph, become a dreamer. And I'm going to dream, and I'm going to dream big dreams, and they're going to happen in Jesus' name. And faith brings substance, brings power, brings ability to those dreams. And then you walk in those dreams. For a long time, I dreamed of traveling to Europe and preaching the gospel. And that never happened. And then I realized I was just asking, saying, God, I want to go to Europe. And I wasn't imagining. And God does above what we ask and imagine. So I put some imagination into my asking. And I started seeing myself on the airplane. I started seeing myself preaching in Europe. And you know what? I think I've traveled there five or six times in the last year. It's just been busy, busy, busy. Invites are coming. And it's why? Because faith gives substance to what? What I hope, what I imagine. We cast down the negative imaginations and we start using our imagination for good and for positive things. We, when we start reading the Word, Start looking at the Bible and start imagining the Bible. You know, don't just read it like a book, but let your imagination run wild. When you read about the woman with the issue of blood, don't just read it, there was a woman with an issue of blood, but start to see her, start to see her face, start to see her push through the crowds. Let your imagination make the Bible vivid. You see, the whole world is after your imagination. Now, music, media, TV, adverts. Adverts are always appealing to your imagination. Insurance adverts, where you get scared about this might happen and this might happen. What are they trying to do? They're trying to put a picture in your imagination. So the whole world is trying to take control of your imagination. But you need to be one who meditates on the Word. When Joshua was about to cross the Promised Land and Joshua was about to cross over Jordan and take the Promised Land, you know, God speaks to him in Joshua 1. The first thing God says to Joshua is, Moses is dead. And I often thought, you know, that's a crazy thing to say, isn't it? You know, Joshua knew Moses was dead. Moses was Joshua's friend. Moses was the leader of the people. Moses was the center, the deliverer of the nation. And Moses was the lawgiver. Moses was the guy with a shining face. Of course, Joshua knew he was dead. But sometimes we have to be told, that's dead. That thing there is dead. You can't go that way anymore. It's time to go further. It's time to do more. You know, it's great. Some of you have come from great Christian backgrounds, great Christian traditions. But you know, John Wesley is dead. 
Smith Wigglesworth is dead. George Jeffries is dead. They're all dead. We are the ones who have to take the gospel to our generation. We are the ones who have to live the abundant life and change this nation and this planet for the better. No one else. It's our job. The task is ours. Paul was a great guy. He's dead. We have to read his words, learn his words, learn from him, stand on the shoulders of giants. But it's us, it's us that need to take things through. And Joshua, you know, I think that was a weight on his shoulders. Can you imagine your, your first job, you know, your first day in your new job, and it turns out the guy who had the job before you had a shining face? You know, turns out he's the guy who gave Israel the Ten Commandments. He split the Red Sea in half, and the people walked through on dry land. People who talked against him got swallowed up by the earth. That's not who I'd want to replace in my first day as a new job. And there's Joshua, oh my goodness, what are we going to do? But God spoke to him and God said, meditate in my word, meditate in the Bible, meditate in the book. When? Day and night, when you get up, when you go to bed. And what will happen if you meditate in the word? You will be, you will have, God says this to Joshua, you will have, Joshua chapter 1, you will have good success. I used to find that phrase really strange. Good success? Surely any success is good success. I'll have any success you're offering. But, you know, as I've got a bit older, a bit wiser, I've seen that there's people who've had success and it hasn't been good. I know people who are multimillionaires, but their, 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 their marriage has fallen apart and they're, they're miserable and they're unhappy. I know people who've got millions in the bank, but they're so sick they can't enjoy it. I know people who've got great health, but they're so poor they can't enjoy their health. You know, good success is success that covers every area of your life. And that's the will of God for you. Success in every area of your life. And you can't get success like that by fighting. You can't get it by going out there and being a man and seizing the day. You can only get it by meditating on the word. And the Hebrew word for meditate means three things. It means to visualize or to imagine. It means to imagine the word. Number two, it means to mutter the word, to say it over and over again. And number three, it means to personalize the word. And so if you're sitting there today and you think, man, I would like my life to be a success. I'm tired of being a failure. I'm tired of failing. I would like to be a success. Well, the answer's in this book. This book is thousands of years old. But the reason people are still reading this, the reason people are still looking at this book is because it has power in it. This book, the Word of God, is living and active and it will get into your life and change your life. Paul said your life will be transformed. How? By the renewing of your mind. What are you going to renew your mind to? Certainly not daytime TV. Certainly not soap operas. Certainly not the newspapers. They're not going to help you. But the Bible is going to help you. So we have to meditate the Word. So we take a passage of Scripture and you start to visualize it, you start to see it. So, for example, the Bible says that Jesus Christ took your sicknesses and your diseases. That's in Isaiah 53, it's in Matthew chapter 8. He bore your sicknesses, he carried your diseases. So what do you do? You visualize that. You look at Jesus on the cross, and you imagine Jesus, and you see Jesus, and he's got your sickness and your diseases, all the stuff you're struggling with, all the health problems, and you see them, on Jesus and then you see yourself and if Jesus has got your cancer if Jesus has got your ingrowing toenail if Jesus has got your diabetes if Jesus has got your migraine headache then where is it it's on him so you start to see it not on you you start to see yourself walking if you've never walked dancing if you couldn't dance you start to see yourself happy free from pain what are we doing we're visualizing the scripture we're visualizing. And then what do we do? We mutter it. We say it over and over. By his stripes I'm healed. Jesus bore my sicknesses and carried my diseases. And you say it and you mutter it. And then you personalize it. Jesus bore my sickness. He carried my disease. He did it for me. And as you meditate on the word, you will have good success. Healing will come. Maybe you're sitting there today and Maybe you're struggling. Maybe you open the cupboards and there's no food. Maybe God's called you to do something and you don't have the money to do it. I know what that's like. I've been there. And so what do you do? You find the word. What does the word say? Philippians 4 and verse 19. My God shall supply all of your needs according to his riches 
in Christ Jesus. So what do we do? We visualize it. Okay? Go to the empty cupboard and visualize it full of food, all your favorite foods, all your favorite things. Open the fridge. Start to picture your fridge full of things. Start to use your imagination. Start to see it. Start to thank God for it. That's what you'd do if it was there, wouldn't you? Start to thank God. You visualize the word and then you mutter the word, my God shall supply all my needs. My God shall supply all my needs. My God shall supply all my needs. And you might have to pace the floor for...